We live in times where men proposes and COVID disposes. And this is only after her wedding had been postponed twice already that my beautiful friend Marie was finally able to say yes. It was a very private affair, the bride and groom and their witnesses only, and they all had masks on. But I am glad to report that the masks were indeed matching the bride's dress, whose color might surprise many of you. Together with the bride, we chose this deep and magnificent purple-coloured fabric and this exquisite lace, and I could not be happier since its richness, softness and watery-like effect truly complements the radiant complexion, the passionate soul and the refined spirit of my talented friend. To ask forgiveness for not having been able to organize myself better and film the making of this dress in these challenging times, I thought that we could sew together a few favors bags for wedding guests using the remaining fabric of the bride's dress. So it is with our foot on our respective pedal and with a smile on our face that we are going to fight gloomy days and times and do a little bit of sewing. I wish to dedicate this tutorial to Marie and Rémy, two fantastic musicians to whom I wish love, joy, music and everlasting bliss. We are going to place a stripe of lace that is 9 cm wide on another stripe that is 20 cm wide and that we cut in the remainings of the dress's main fabric. I made the stripes as long as I could with the fabric I had left, which was quite a lot, thankfully. Pin the lace in place and fold your main fabric over. The edge of the lace should be tightly sandwiched in the fold. Now we are going to make a row of straight stitches at 5 mm from the edge. My main fabric is very shifty and fluid which makes it so special and beautiful but it is wiser to secure it in place with several pins before bringing it to the sewing machine. Also, before stitching, and because I have enough material left, I will allow myself the luxury to prepare a second fabric sandwich with this fine embroidered lace from Calais. You have to believe me, it really is a treat to work with such fine material. We are going to stitch both stripes and when it's done, we can unfold the fabric and remove all the pins. Feel free to prepare as much stripes as possible, knowing that you will need a length of 18 cm for each little bag. Don't worry, we'll get to that later in the video. Now we are going to top stitch at about 1 to 2 mm from the edge, making sure that the main fabric is completely open. I am using a special presser foot for top stitching, which is not compulsory but highly recommended since it makes our lives so much easier. I linked my video top 10 favorite tools for sewing down below if you are interested in discovering wonderful tools that really propel your sewing to the next level like this one. Now, on top of our fabric, right sides together, I place a 19 cm wide stripe of the remaining lining from the dress and I stitch at 1 cm from the edge. Take your time, sew straight, enjoy yourself and when it is done, open your fabric again and top stitch it at 1 mm from the edge. To be more accurate, this will actually be a row of under stitches since it will allow the lining to properly stay in place inside the little bags. Press if needed and remember to stitch with the sewing allowance folded on the lining side. I did so off camera, forgive me, and the result is there. The lining will lay perfectly flat inside the bags and no seam will be visible on the outside. We are now going to cut our stripes into smaller sections that are 18 cm long as I stated earlier. 
These 18 cm correspond to the width of the finished bag multiplied by 2, because we have a front and a back, plus another 2 cm for sewing allowance. Don't panic, the ink of the pen I am using right now disappears with the heat of the iron. I linked it in the description box down below as well as all the sewing supplies we are using in this video. To cut your fabric you can use sewing scissors of course or a cutting mat with a rotary cutter which is really really convenient. In any case we will end up with a small pile of pieces that need to be opened and prepped to be stitched. And of course I will show you now how to proceed. We are going to fold our fabric right sides together lengthwise, making sure that the seams are perfectly aligned on top of each other. Then we can pin the fabric in place. When the fabric is pinned, we need to make two marks at the bottom of the lining, three or maybe four centimeters apart. This will allow us to turn the fabric inside out later. Stitch the fabric at 1 cm from the edge, making sure to stop at the first mark and then to go on stitching starting at the second mark. So again, do not stitch your fabric between both marks, you wouldn't be able to turn your bags inside out later. Voila! Our little bags are ready to be stitched, c'est parti! Hold the threads to begin with, make a few back and forth stitches to secure your seam and stitch up to the first mark. When you reach a corner, leave your needle in the fabric, lift your presser foot up, pivot the fabric and go on stitching up to this first mark. Once you reach the first mark, make a few back and forth stitches, lift your presser foot up and position your needle on the second mark to repeat the same operation. Today I am not sewing many bags at all and I'm actually making more bags than needed for this very private wedding, but in normal times I have had to sew bags for up to 200 guests and in this case I highly highly recommend working step by step instead of sewing one bag entirely before the next one. For instance, here I keep fitting my sewing machine bags and I do not cut the threads between them. This saves time and thread. It's only after completing a step for every single bag that we can go on to the next one. Alright, we have created sort of a string of sausages here and now at last we can cut the threads that link them together. Then I cut every single corner of every single bag. And then, finally, I turn them all inside out. When this will be done, we will need to close the little opening that allowed us to turn them on the right side. This will prevent the sugared almonds or any other treat you might be fond of to get lost between two layers of fabric. First option, the neater one, which of course takes more time, making a few invisible stitches by hand and of course I will do just that since I want my bags impeccable inside and out. The second option, quicker but slightly less pretty of course, consists in closing the opening with a few top stitches made with a sewing machine. In any case, remember that we are talking about the lining which will be hidden inside the bag and covered with delicious treats. And I am afraid that guests will undoubtedly be more interested in the content of the bag rather than the quality of its inside finishes. So if anything has to be double checked, it really is indeed the quality of your bag's delicacies. That's delicious. I am going to garnish my bags generously, tie a little ribbon around their pretty necks, give myself a pat on the shoulder and call it a day. Bye bye! A bientôt!